you know, breaking habits is hard and um, you feel weird, like you're in, you know, just like something's off. And that's why it's like we have a tendency to just automatically be pulled it towards our habits, our natural instincts. And it really is a conscious effort to go the other way. Like, this isn't natural. This doesn't feel right, but I'm going to give it a try. So with that, let's get started. Okay, now here's where we stop in part two. This is where the painting is. And we did, We here is what we did. We cut out random things that I pulled from magazines that felt like, oh, I don't do that very much, or that's not my normal habit. And I wrote down those things that, you know, I like to basically bring it down to the basics, like everything, just bring things down to the basics. It makes things so much simpler. So this was chaotic. Um, I didn't focus on these images as much as what I wrote down. So I've got most of these. I think I've got chaotic, um, this color, the text, drawing, these angular lines, thin angled stripes. I didn't do this one, which is the different bluish purple color, and I didn't do a big shape. But I don't have to do every single one of these. Um, so where I am right now is to put this aside and think about what I want to do next. And what I want to do next, as I look at it, is I still want to kind of edge because this um, toward what's not typical um, and not a natural habit because that's what all these are about. But I still want to do something that I might like. And so what I thought about is going back to the triangular color chart, I must tell you that these things, if you just take the time to do them, I know you've heard about me say this over and over, but it is such a shortcut. Think shortcut. So right now I'm looking at this bright green and I really love what this is, but I know it's not a finished painting, nor do I'm thinking about it being as finished painting. But if I were at that juncture of what do I do with this? Now I've learned a lot. Do I want to just put it aside or I'm going to take a stab at making it something that I might like, even though it's not my natural thing. So I pulled out my color chart to think what colors would I like to add to this? Whoa, here we go. Um, I do plan on doing something with this. Um, and I really came up with doing some greens because I love this. I held this up and I love these colors in here. And I don't typically do, hardly ever do greens, ever. I think once I did a green painting or maybe twice in my entire career. So I'm going to start with these. And this is why, and I think it will work with this color, look at me just holding it up. And it turns out that this color underneath here, the big, the big area here, will use with cerulean blue. I had forgotten, but I still have my palette. And look how great it is when you're not totally finished a painting, or even if you are, to keep your, your palettes and write on them what you used for this color. It's really, really helpful. So um, I'm not, don't need this, but I will keep it until I'm totally finished this painting. So I'm going to put that aside. So I am going to make this not a green painting, but I'm going to add more green in it and asking myself if I were to do green, let's see what happens. So I'm going to use this as a color palette. That's yellow ochre, that's cerulean blue, and that's cad red medium. So I'm going to use these three and I'm going to make some of these colors and see what happens. And after that, we're going to go to the other huge thing that I couldn't live without, which is the painting guides. And I might take some of these and lay them on top to see if there's anything else I want to add to it after I do this. And as far as composition, um, thinking of composition, I really think that instead of making this kind of an all over abstract, I'm going to do one with more thinking in stripes, a stripe or a horizontal composition. So this will be a horizontal composition. So let's see where we take it from here. And when I use the color chart, I'd love to have 
good habits of doing some things around color the same. And that is, I always, li I like to do the light at the top, the dark at the bottom for values. So I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to do the um, yellow ochre. I'm going to put the cerulean blue down here. Uh, here we go. So it looks like this, and I can, I'm can. i going to try to mix something in these lines. I don't know what, but we'll see. But this is where we'll start. And we have some white, because that's what we have. We just have these three colors, yellow ochre, cerulean blue, and white. And I'll just put white over here on the side. So this is all. And I really encourage you not to get too detailed and overwhelmed with adding color, 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 color. You can make so many colors. Look, all these colors came from here. Um, and so, and we could do this in here, which is the combination of these three colors. But anyway, okay, let's start here. So I'm going to do a horizontal composition, thinking in terms of, let's see what happens if we do greens, blue greens. These are blue greens. So I have on this chart, I have a little bit of the yellow. That's what we do. And I won't take all of it, but a little bit of yellow, uh, mostly, ye mostly yellow, a little bit of the blue. Let's see what happens. And again, it's really hard to recreate this. So it's just everything we do is a guide. I guess I need more than that. Let's see. This is a guide in the direction. That's all we really want, a direction. So, and I'm going to show you another thing I really love about not only the color chart, but having it laminated. Watch this. Let's see. I'm going to hold this up against here. And it's, um, I think I'm going to put a little bit more blue in there. And again, it's just an I, it's just a start. So I'm going to use this, but I also want, this is what I wanted to show you. What I love is if you have a color that you're trying to make, if it's laminated, you can do this. You can go right on the side of it like this on top of the laminated one and then wipe it off. That is really close. So not that I mean to do it exactly. I just wanted to show you a trick. Um, this is what I love about these. And then just wipe it off. Voila. So, okay. So we got this. Then we're going to add some white. And, you know, again, some white. So let's do that. This is just to get started. We're going to go in a million different directions. And we're going to add some, I'm going to add some gloss medium. I love that color, but this is why it's so great to have this triangular color chart. I'm going to keep it here because I just love looking at them. And you know, I know it, it, you may think it takes a lot of time that yeah, you don't want to do this because you just want to paint, but I'm telling you, if you just put aside one day, one day and do this, you have it forever. And I really would encourage you to either put it in um, a clear um, sheet protector or laminate it. But anyway, okay. So here's one. And I don't know. I'm not, I'm not thinking too hard about it. I just know horizontal composition. So where are we going to put that horizontal composition? Oh, by the way. So if we have a horizontal composition and we have to divide, I want to divide it up into fifths. Remember, odd numbers are great. So what part of this do I want to keep? And what part of this do I want to keep? And where do I want to put them in this composition? Well, I kind of like this in the middle. So I'm going to do something like this. I'm just, again, guidelines. Everything is guidelines. I love this. I'm going to keep this at the bottom. Um, I'm going to do a big one of these for right now. I can always make it smaller. So we've got three. We have to divide two more things. I'm going to do a really, another one down here. One, two, three, four. So this is a large, this is, but I'm not sure. I'm going to just, let's see what happens. I'm going to do these so far and I'll add the fifth one later. So where do I put this one? Do I, I'm going to put it right in the middle. And you know what? I think I'm going to add a little bit more white. Okay. And again, see, this is one of the things, well, to just play and have fun and, and just start off everything with, let's see what happens. It could be, let's see what happens, awesome, or let's see what happens, not so awesome. 
Uh-oh, I accidentally got it in the blue. That's okay. Everything is okay. It leads you to a fabulous place. Okay, let's see. I'm going to add more white here. And you know what? I think I'm going to add a little bit more water because I do want to cover this up. Okay. And what I'm trying to do is I'm not, I'm not out to make a finished painting with this. I'm still in the experimental mode, breaking habits by using greens. Um, but, you know, that's kind of what I'm doing. So I'm going to do something down here. Do I want to follow this? If so, I think I'm going to do a really dark blue. So I'm going to actually maybe, add, let's see, I'm going to do a dark blue, which is a straight blue with a little bit of yellow. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a little black. Okay. I love black added to any color. I just love it. Just the tiniest bit. You don't need much unless you want to make a really deep one. So I'm going to pull this down over here. Always put the dark colors on the side and pull them into the other colors a little at a time. This is like a midnight blue, which is also in our, look at that gorgeous color. So I'm going to do this one here. Okay, let's see. Let me wipe these off. All right, now let's see. We need, I'll get one of these and add some water. And I'm just basically using what we did and moving forward to something else. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of the gloss because it's don't have a whole lot of paint on here. And grab things in here. I always do that where I'll mix a color, but then whatever's around it on the palette, I typically kind of just grab it. Grab something. Let's see. Oh, and I also wanted to show you, I just put a couple of tools out. Like if you wanted a straight line, I could do this and just hold this here and go along here if you wanted a straight line or something similar. I don't like super straight, although sometimes it works. There. I think that was, let's see, up a little bit, something like that. Okay, there. So let's wipe this off and let's see what's next. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> I know. Okay, see, by looking at it, I'm thinking, I like this. It gives some weight at the bottom. I like having this big middle to play with. I love that this is different. This is a pattern. This is a pattern. And so I want another really something up here that's going to be totally different than this. Um, so is there something in here that I want, like this blue-green? I'm going to try this darker blue, not as deep as this, but something like this. So it's more blue and I may need to put some, um, put this over here and mix something else on this other, uh, oh here. So I'm going to put it like this, mostly blue, a little bit of the yellow, a little bit of the yellow. Let's see what that looks like. Sort of like that. I'm going to add a little bit more. Every more, the more yellow I add, the greener it is. So, um, let me see. Where's, oh, here it is. Cerulean. And really, think of this as just, it's like a chemical experiment. To me, not only a chemical experiment, it's like one of those things. I think there's a toy or something that you can get this rock or crystal and you put water in it or put a solution in it and it grows like this and you just go, whoa, look at that. That's how I feel like when every time you mix a color, it's like, whoa, look at that. That's awesome. So we have this. Um, now, do we want to do anything? This is more green, but I still like it. Um, what about a really light one, though? So I'm going to do this. I made this color, but I'm going to add something else. Not, so I'm not going to totally go by the, the triangular color chart. I'm going to add a lot of white in it. Let's see what happens now totally different value. We've got a dark value here and what that's going to do in contrast to this chaotic area there. I like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around 
when I might end up doing it this way. And I did like working with this. So do I want this? Now I have to think, do I want this to be a big area or a small area? And I can have this at the top or this there. I like this. This is really blue compared to this. So I think I'm going to put it here. And let's see. We're just playing as we go. Um, and I love y'all joining me. I feel like you're right here with me in the studio, which I love. Wow, look at that color. And I don't have anything planned, um, as you can tell. It's really, the, the step before is what informs your next step. So I like everything that's going on here. And I don't even know if I want to keep this area. I might. I am until I know I don't want it. But I don't have a whole lot of paint, so I might have to do something else. Let's say we're going to go all, almost all the way up, because I love these two colors together. Okay, and I have another idea. Let's see. And this is where kind of design and everything else starts to come in. So I'm going to do this. And to make all the paint go farther, I either add water or more um, medium. And I like that it's not too heavy, um, too opaque. So that's what I have so far. Let me wipe this off. So what's next? Um, let's see. Do I like that at the bottom? I love something like this here, but I don't want to put it the same thickness as this. So I'm going to put a very, I know, I'm just, just for fun, I'm just going to put, I am going to cover this all up. I'm going to put white. White. I don't know why. Doesn't matter why. I'm going to put white, and I will take this, this pen, this brush. Let's see. See what that does. Does it make everything pop? So basically, when you think about it, what this did is, even if we don't stay with the, exactly what we did, we're making it in, we, we basically learned. What did I learn? I learned that... Um, Doing having something else to go by to me really makes it more fun. Um, it really expands my all the techniques and everything that I do. My my so breaking my habits is really important to do consciously. Even if like I still have this, even if I come out with just this section of a whole new painting, that's fine. Um, and again, you don't have to make it into a painting. I'm just like. If you wanted to make it into a painting and not just have it sit on the side in your studio, then okay. So now we have five of these. One, two, three, four, five. Now where? Now where? Okay, where do I go next? I love everything. This color isn't, isn't working for me. So what am I going to do about that? I'm going to take this, refer to this. I want a dark color. I want a dark value. Um, does it have to be blue? Should it be green? And now I'm just putting this aside and I'm going to mix like a dark blue green and see what I come up with. A dark blue green. But I really love this. It, it really gives a lot to the painting, I think. So let's see. And I might do something else, a, a different way of putting it on. That's the other thing. You don't have to always use a paintbrush. Suppose I wanted to put it on with this, like, all right, let me turn this to the side. Suppose I'd wanted to just go like this. It skips some of the things. It's kind of, and um, gives it, it skips some of the paint underneath. I kind of like that. See, you can see this, I'm leaving this. I like that technique. It's kind of like using um, the trowel. I like that pop there. So I like what that worked out. So this is really a great place. So we've got, we've turned that into one, two, three, four, five. Now, what do I want to do? I just love these. I'm not going to actually 
finish this to the very end because that wasn't the point of this this series it was to break habits but you can see how you can take this a little bit farther into something that you might like um i'm going to do a few more things on this but i'm not going to take this to the absolute finished one you can see how you can do this so again as far as editing so i got to this place i like these things the first thing you ask yourself is what's bothering me most um, what's bothering me most? Well, I, uh, this area in here, something's bothering me in here. Uh, maybe because you can see underneath it. I'm not sure, but I'm going to go over it with a different color. Um, I like this color, but I might want to change it just a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre. Um, let's see. But I think all these colors, like look... What I thought about adding to work with that, I'm really satisfied with. So let me, now it's just play and experiment time. So what would happen if I just mix what was on here and add white? This is a dark blue. I love just mixing whatever's on my palette because you get the color or something that you never could have thought you would get. Okay, this is a, whoops, a green. Now, just for kicks, just for kicks, let's think if we added the complement, which is a little bit of red, to tone down that green, see what that happens. See if what, that ha what happens. I'm going to do a little bit of this. So it's more of a neutral. And white. I could just play with color all day long. It cuts the green, but it's still a real neutral. Now I'm going to add a bunch of white and see a um, bunch of white here. And just take a little bit of this at first. Oh, look, it's kind of like a, a really cool taupe. You know I hate taupe. <laughs> you know how much I love taupe. Anyway, so, okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Wow, look how I got that. So basically adding the complement and white. Now, this is more gray. Do I like it with this? I do. But I still like a, the, a little bit of the yellow. So I'm going to add some yellow back, but I'm going to add another yellow. I'm going to add the Hansa yellow. Just because I love to experiment with, I could just sit here and, and mix colors all day long. So then, whatever color this makes, I'm putting on here. Like it or not like it. This is what we're going to do. Kind of looks like that. How about that? All right, so I'm going to add some gloss. And after I do this, we're going to be finished. Oh, except for one thing. I just got one more idea. So, oh. All right, so we do that. Let's see. We put these in here. I'm going to do a big one here. Big brush. And it's a still a little bit wet underneath. And look, the brush, I didn't even really wipe off much. And it has a little bit of the blue from that, which I think is cool. So I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. I really like that. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it side to side and making sure that every single thing is covered. Plus, I don't want to see that line. So I'm going over that line. Goodbye, line. Okay. Whoops. I see what happened. <laughs> Something else happened. I like that better. But I like it because I put another color that was very similar and very subtle over the underneath. So you still do have some of these and then a little bit of blue. So this is where I would go from here. And the other thing I was going to show you is... If you wanted, um, like this is mostly greenish blue. So if you were to take a complement, say orange, and do something with that, maybe not this exact um, one, but suppose you did this. This is what I do sometimes in mine. Um, let's see. And then we'll be done. And it's on the brighter side. So I love the neutrals with the brighter. I'm going to do a lot of water, and then I'm going to splatter. Do 
And the reason, and then I would let this dry. And again, I'm not going to go back and do more to this, but if you were to do it, if I were, I would love to have things like this and I would layer upon layer upon layer. But at the end result, I'm really happy with breaking my habits um, and being aware of my habits. And that's the most important thing. That's what you should come out, I hope that you come away with from all from these, um, these breaking habits series is to notice your habits and notice how you automatically, it's like driving your car for someplace that you go autumn all, all the time. If you just take a different turn, you feel like you're weird, like, oh gosh, I've never noticed this way. So it's the same thing when you're working. And you saw how just doing that, we learned so many things about how, and about texture, how to make the chaos, chaotic level um, layer. And with the, this and writing, kind of like with prompts, so I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned from it and try to break your habits. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, we've just done the orange splatter and this is really as much as I'm going to do for this painting. This whole series wasn't about coming out with a finished painting. It was actually just the opposite. But I wanted to show you how you could transition from something that's experimental and an exercise into a painting if you wanted. And now I want to show you um, something else. If you have your fabulous painting guides, you can take these and just hold over for your next step. If this was your next step, you hold over some. Do you want to add some of this? Do you want to add a shape? I would say a shape. Um, let's see what else. Do you want to add patterns? Do you want to add the asymmetric, um, you know, writing? You could do this overlapping. Think of overlapping, um, overlapping the line. This is what I would do uh, if I were to do another one. That's why I love these wonderful painting guides. Uh, I could do this. Mm, I wouldn't do this because I already have uh, the orange, but, but I would think about doing that. I love the black and white. Let's see, hold on. Just getting these and holding them over helps you find a direction. So I would definitely do something here, either up here or over here, or you might want to fill in this whole middle with that. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Just to go through. Oh, I love this. And look how cool this looks. This works with these. This works with this. So you could do, I would say I would do this. I would use these circles, and I love the color too. I would use that, and then the asymmetric um, writing. Somehow, this these two would be my next step. But I wanted to show you how easily using your painting guides can really help you when you're at the this phase of a painting to take you to the next step. So I hope you've learned a lot. I know I have. I've had a lot of fun trying to be just aware of breaking my habits. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.